Hey everybody, Flannel Camper here, bringing you another how-to video. This time it's involved in the old family truckster. A few weeks ago we had a good snowstorm up here in the old Pacific Northwest, or people in the Midwest probably look at it as a light dusting. I mean, we had inches of snow. And it shut the city down, schools were closed all week, so I ended up driving the wife's rig to work. So, last day of the week, they said it was gonna clear up, so drove the truck to work. Anyway, coming home, side streets are still packed with ice. So I put the old four-wheel drive in, came around the corner, and back in, chased around the front end of the truck, basically. Pretty good 180, took me by surprise. Turns out, the front drive wheels were not engaged even though everything was in four-wheel drive and nothing was flashing thought everything was hunky-dory so made an arrangement that didn't feel like messing with it take it to the dealership see if they can troubleshoot what's wrong with it and got the report back that the four-wheel drive actuator needed to be replaced and looked at their quote was nine hundred and seventy two dollars to replace the actuator I got online to see if I can find an actuator myself. Went to Amazon. There were several available, all with different reviews. So I kind of went middle of the road, picked one. 98 bucks. It was at my house in about three days. And went in the truck and show you guys how I replaced it. So you can see we got a whopping 50,828.4 miles on this thing. And like I said, the four-wheel drive is not working. So we come down here to four-wheel drive. You see it starts blinking. Everything looks good. Four-wheel drive lock is lit up, not blinking. But the actuator is not actuating. Go back to two-wheel drive. All right, let's head underneath and get this actuator swapped out. All right, we've got the truck up on some ramps. Get a little better access underneath. Back wheel is chocked. Key fob is on the bench. So here we go. Okay, so here is the 4x4 actuator that is not working and giving us our issues. So the first thing we're going to do is Take the electrical connector off. Lifting up on that red connector. And taking that loose. He's got plenty of dielectric grease inside so we don't have any problem with corrosion or anything. Next thing we'll do is get this like that get the connector up and out of the way next thing we got are these four <laughs> bolts here 10 millimeter not sure if oil is going to come out or not a couple videos said they lost about a tablespoon okay I got someone backed out a little bit I'm gonna loosen this and break the seal and see if anything comes out a little dribble but okay all the bolts are loose lost a little bit of oil but we'll top that off when we're done so this thing here slides straight out Make sure you collect the gasket. And clean off the surface a little bit here. And you can see inside, this ring right here where I'm pointing, 
that is where this fork slides over that. So, got our gaskets in place. So we're gonna slide, make sure those forks intercept with that piece right there. Install our fasteners. Fitting room, we're just going to snug these back up. You don't have to put the Macho Man Randy Savage. Herculean torque on these things. It's just a plastic fitting, so I just want it to be snug. Wipe off any spills there, leftover residual stuff. Let's get our electrical connector. Holder in there out the ground but that comes with the fact with the replacement it just slides down snaps in place there's your red retainer clip okay so once the connector is in place then you just slide the red retaining tab down till it locks in place that's all there is to it so you can see that took maybe 30 minutes at the most by the time I got it up on blocks, chalked it and everything was good and safe and uh, really simple, easy thing to do and you know, if you want to pay a dealership to do it, it's so whatever kind of floats your boat, whatever your skill level is, but this is a simple, easy task. I'll leave a link below for the part on Amazon and there you go. Anyway, thanks for joining and remember, calories don't count when you're camping. Okay, so we got the old actuator here in the bench, and I'm going to take a look inside. Pretty hokey setup for a big one-ton truck, a lot of plastic, but anyway, I'm throwing this away so I didn't take my time opening it back up, but I took the tabs off, pulled this apart, and there's your setup. Little 12-volt motor, lots of plastic gears. This is what, when the actuator calls to go to four-wheel drive, this motor's energized, and, uh, you can see it turns everything that's what slide when this motor here through gear reductions moves this fork over looking up here in the control board a little bit of grease but you can see here a lot of corrosion so it's a harsh environment underneath the truck a lot of road debris and water and stuff but pretty much that's going to be your fail point right there so 